Hey there, I'm actually inside the screened in porch present day and today I'm going to show you step by step every single thing you need to know, every tool you need to make gigantic screens like this. And not just make screens, if you got to repair screens, the same steps are below. Look at the timestamps while you're down there, look at the new shirt. In front of me I got everything that I will need to make the screens that I'm going to be making in which I'm actually making the frame itself out of some 2x4 that's been painted so far. Now there is timestamps down below if you don't need to make the frame but you want to learn some tricks on how to do the screening you can follow those timestamps and jump to where you want to jump. So in my case I got the frame. I'm using a screen tight system. This is from Home Depot is where I found it and this allows me to actually screw the screen dado onto the frame and then just clip it into place and not have to cut a dado in those boards which I didn't want to do. I got various drills, you can do it with one. We need some spring clamps, we need some screws to put the screen tight in, and in my case, screw the frame. You obviously need splines, a spline roller, this is a super cheap one. If you're gonna be using the screen tight system, you need a mallet. Obviously, you're gonna need some screen material as well. This is a giant roll. This is 100 foot long, and this is 84 inches wide, which allows me to do our gigantic screens in one piece, which is really awesome. This is called Better View by Pfeiffer, and it looks fantastic. It barely looks like it's there, which is what we were after. We got the insect protection as well, and it costs about $200 for this roll. A miter saw will really help to cut the screen tight system, and obviously we need it for our two by fours, but if you're just putting some screen in and replacing some screen, you don't need that. You do need a nice big area to be able to do these screens, one that you can walk around to ideally, Although I have done screens in the past at my first job, which was an Ace Hardware, in a corner on a table. So it can be done and you can do a great job that way as well. Here you can kind of see all of the measurements that I need for the various screens. Got top, bottom, left, and right, and I have then transposed them over to something that's a little bit more legible. Left, top, right, bottom, kind of working my way clockwise around the frame. Obviously, if you don't need to build a frame, you can just skip forward ahead of this. The frame we're building right now is square. Well, almost perfectly square. We don't have any angles to mess around with is what I'm saying. So right now, I'm working on frame six here. I want to transpose all those measurements to my board and then we'll cut them up on the miter saw and get ready to assemble. And I have learned in doing a couple of these so far that I'm doing a sixteenth of an inch less all the way around and that just makes for a slightly easier fit when we're putting this big guy into place. any assembly I am drilling a 5 16 inch hole in the sides of the frame and this will allow us to use four inch structural screws to screw the thing into the frame of the pergola the only thing you want to make sure here is you're in the middle and you're away from where this other board is going to connect to give you enough room to work <laughs> To assemble these frames, I found it's easiest to go with a 1 8 inch drill bit countersunk all the way through the edge so you don't see the hole and you don't have to go through and do any touch-ups. And then I'm using a 3 and a half inch Power Pro Torx head screw for the assembly. I would like to take a moment to thank our sponsor today, which is Ritual, delivering multivitamins right to your door, the most obsessively researched and transparent multivitamins, just like their transparent time release capsule that's in this bottle right here. Now, this is essential for men multivitamins, but Ritual does have something for everybody, so check them out at ritual.com. And while you're over there, ritual.com forward slash DIY Tyler, you can use the code DIY Tyler for 10% off your first three months. Again, delivered right to your door for a dollar a day. And this is fantastic because it keeps you mindful of where you're at in the month and that you need to take your multivitamins. I need to start taking a multivitamin because I obviously have some gaps in my diet. 
So Ritual has the most obsessively researched and transparent ingredients in their multivitamins and you can check them out on their website and know exactly where these are coming from and exactly what you are putting into your mouth. Again, ritual.com forward slash DIY Tyler and use the code DIY Tyler at checkout for 10% off your first three months. You don't want to miss out on this. If you made your own frames, be very aware of how you measured for those frames and how you're building it on the table. In my case, I'm looking at this screen from the inside. So we need to flip it over and put the screen tight and the screen on the front so that everything lines up correctly. If you're not using the screen tight system, you can skip ahead to actually putting the screen on. If you are using the screen tight system, you want to start with the sides and I'll show you more about that in a second when we do the top and the bottom. But if you're a simple guy like I am, you use the frame itself to make your marks. And this is the way it's going to be oriented with the grooves up. You want to make sure you transfer that line around to the smooth other side because it makes it a little bit easier to cut on the miter saw. We are lined up here to make our first cut. Like I mentioned before, you wanna transfer your mark over to the top because these tend to grab a little bit easier than if you have it upside down like this. And then I'm using what's called a $10 million stick to keep my fingers far away from here in case it does grab, which I've had happen before, and I can get support right up against the blade where you should never have your fingers. I am using one and a quarter inch Power Pro exterior screws to put these in place. It is best to leave a little bit of your frame visible because when you're looking from the inside, which is this way, you won't see anything but white. Whereas if you accidentally go over, you will see a black line on the border of your frame. So it's best to just offset it a little bit like this and it makes things simpler. Now you do want to make sure you have a screw right here at the end and you can just drive through this plastic material. To make sure this doesn't bubble up at all when we got the covers on there. And you want to make sure it's in the middle so that the clips for the top can go into place still. I'm going to do the same measuring routine for the top and bottom of our screen tight. Obviously making sure that we go to the outside of the side frames that we just put into place. I have the screen sitting here on the ground so that I can roll it out over the frame. Now if you had a professional environment you would have this on a roll bar which makes it a lot easier and above the ground. But it's going to be a long time between doing this I hope so we'll just put it on the ground. Again this is a square frame if we had one with a top angle which we'll work on later you want to make sure the bottom or the flat part is near your roll so that you can pull things snugly. And then we want to go ahead and use our spring clamps to clamp things in place here along the top and we want to make sure that we are square-ish along the edges and this will just make sure that the squares of the screen are kind of parallel with the size top bottom etc. It won't be perfect but it's the little things. Just want to kind of get it together right now. We don't need to pull it tight because we don't have anything on the other side. It's kind of rolled up out of the way. And then we can add a couple of spring clamps on the back here. And then we can cut it off so that we can make sure that we get things snug. Pulling things down and across, not too tightly right now. We just want to make sure things are not wrinkled is the biggest point. Now you can see the way I have things laid out in the shop kind of allows me to work without climbing over myself down to the little things about where the spline is sitting so that I can work directly across. Now, in inserting the spline in the screens, 
I like to work from one corner and back to this corner. So I'm going to do this side, which happens to be the top. And then we will do that side. We'll do the parallel side from this and then work our way back to this corner, making sure we keep things tight and hopefully don't get any bubbles in the screen. So we're going to grab our spline roller. And we're just going to start in the corner, kind of work my way out to the side first, and then we will change directions and go this way. We can pull things decently snug because we have the spring clamps on the other side. We don't have full retention on that side, meaning we don't have the spline. So we just want to make sure we don't get wrinkles on here, and then we'll tighten it across on the other side. You can see we're kind of working this roll out of here. If you do happen to run over it, just go ahead and pull the spline out before you get too far and continue rolling it away. You probably know this already, but there's a convex roller and a concave. I think that's what they are. Anyway, it goes out and this one goes in. And the one that goes in really allows you to get a good grip on there, but a word of warning, this can actually cut your screen if you're not careful. going to cut the excess off. Be very careful. You don't damage all your hard work so far. I have done that before. I'm just cutting down the middle of this string tight track right here. It allows a nice big guide and a little room for air. Time to put our string tight system covers on much like the bases, uh, except I like to work top and bottom, whereas before we started with the sides. Here's the secret, bring it in. This is a little trick from my industrial controls days where we designed electrical panels using a very similar material like this for wiring duct. And you always wanted to do your horizontal pieces sticking out as far as you could so that when this piece is vertical, you gotta remember we're looking at the bottom of the screen here. When this is vertical and you get those temperature shifts, you don't want gravity to pull this side of your screen tight system down. So the way we have it this way, it's gonna sit right on top of there it's never going to move. You'll never see a gap here or a gap on the bottom. It's the little things. There you are. Screen is done and looking like a trampoline. So we're going to go ahead and install this. Obviously this install is going to be much different from someone that's using an aluminum frame, but I'm going to take you along for the ride. If you had an aluminum prefab frame, it's probably going to click into your windows with some little tabs. 
and you'll be good to go. The concepts of installing the screens are going to be exactly the same, and that's really a tried and true method that I showed you right there to getting trampoline-like screens. There's not a single wrinkle in this screen, and they're just looking fabulous. Remember, if you are installing a big screen like this, remember your orientation, and let's get it outside. Sarah, that's not quiet. That's gonna be a big window. Cause I have a big screen. Alrighty, that is a wrap. I hope that helps some of you out if you have to make gigantic screens like this or just repair some screens. It is not difficult to do and can save you a ton of money to do it yourself. As you can see, present day, we've done a lot on this deck, so make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss when we upload the new video. Get yourself some merch too. We'll see you guys next time.